Hello, this is Dr. Ken Morlino from Wilmington University. This video presents a quick overview of the managerial accounting master budget process. The images used in this video are taken from the textbook for course MBA 6100, which is currently Managerial Accounting 15th edition from McGraw-Hill by authors Garrison, Noreen, and Brewer. Before we get into the master budget process, let's take a quick role, look at the role of budgets. Budgets are basically financial planning tools that are used to help make better decisions, and a budget specifically is a statement of the allocation of financial resources to achieve an organization's objectives for a specific period of time. It is a financial plan. It will typically cover a fiscal year or a fiscal quarter and is ensure that money is spent in accordance with per the specified purpose. And it is an operational tool, again, used for better decision making, planning, and control. The budgeting process is ongoing. We use budgets to evaluate performance against a predicted budget, which would be a past view, and therefore a measure of performance based on the firm's history. And we also use budgets as a forward-looking tool to help us in planning to op and to optimize financial resources to meet sales goals within company restraints. And the master budget is a significant forward-looking planning tool. So what is the master budget? The master budget is an accounting process that involves input from many individuals and in areas including marketing, production, accounting, and the finance departments. Okay. It is part of the short-term tactical and strategic planning for the firm. It's a rolling continuous financial plan, meaning it is constantly being worked on. And the details quantifies various budgets, including sales, payments for purchases, production costs, cash flows in the cash budget, and results in pro forma or predicted income statement and balance sheets for the upcoming period. In this slide, let's take a look at the overall process. So the master budget starts from a predicted sales budget. The sales budget for the upcoming period drives all subsequent sub-budgets in the master budget, which includes a production budget for a manufacturing firm, which indicates how much, uh, how much, how much production should be done to support the sales predictions. From the production budget, we have various budgets, including uh, ending inventories, direct materials, labor, and manufacturing overhead. Okay, also to, to support the sales budget, there are various selling and administrative expenses which would be budgeted. Okay, these all lead to the preparation of the cash budget. And finally, the cash budget drives the pro forma or budgeted income statement. And also using the beginning balance sheet uh, period, uh, ba balances for the period, we end up with a budgeted ending balance sheet for the period in question. So the master budget process starts with two key ingredients. One is the sales forecast for the upcoming period, and then there'll be various assumptions or criteria that the f each particular firm will have. So assumptions, again, use balance sheet values from the uh, prior period, okay, and remember that ending balance figures for the period prior become the beginning balances for the upcoming period, and in the master budget process, we'll need beginning balances uh, for figures such as cash accounts receivable, raw material inventory valuables, and accounts payable. Again, these are taken from the balance sheet for that, that for the period in which just ended. And then there are, the firm would have various assumptions. And if you're following along in the text, you can see various assumptions that the firm has that you would use in preparing the various master budget subschedules. So the master budget process starts with a prediction of sales for the period. In this example, the firm is preparing a one-year master budget in quarterly increments. We can see four quarters right there. And in this budget, we see the sales budget up top and the collections budget below. The sales budget is based on sales predictions for each quarter, and the total sales figure is the units sold times 
uh, the unit sold prediction times the unit cost. So for quarter one, we see there are $200,000 in sales predicted, which are the budgeted units sales, 10,000 times $20 a case. Now look at the collections figure. This is based on the assumption that 70% of sales is collected in the month of sales or the quarter of sales and 30% the following quarter. So see how the first quarter sales of 200,000 is broken out into 70,000 or 70% 70 of, of, of 200 is 140,000 in quarter one. And then this, the remaining balance of 60,000 would be would be collected in quarter two. And we repeat that process for each of the four quarters. A thorough re review of each of the sub-budgets in the example is beyond the scope of this short video. But each of the budgets are prepared, each of the budgets prepared are based on the sales predictions and the various assumptions of the company. And in the example, you'll see there are various budgets prepared. The production schedule. So based on the sales budget, how many units produced do we need to make uh, to meet the sales prediction? And in those production budgets, we would account for beginning and ending inventory periods uh, for each of the quarters. And to support the production schedule, we may need to purchase materials uh, or, or, or other goods to support the production schedule. And so we have a materials purchase schedule. And then we would have a prepare a, a payment schedule for those purchases that we need. Um, and this would involve the accounts payables schedule, which one of the assumptions in, in the example is that payments are made 50% uh, of the purchases are paid for in the quarter and the remaining 50% are following in the final quarter of the following quarter and you'll see this in the purchases and payments budget schedule and from the again the production we would have a labor budget what labor do we need to support production what overhead do we need to support production and to support the sales uh, figures and and all of the other activities there would be a, a subsequent selling and administrative expenses that would be reported in its own budget so each of the various budgets are driven by the sales budget and they all culminate in the preparation of the cash budget the cash budget is a very important document as it estimates quarterly cash flow and ending balance First, so in this example, notice the beginning balance of cash, 42500 This is taken from the ending cash balance from the balance sheet for the prior quarter. And then secondly, notice um, as we go down, the various figures are taken from the various schedules in the example. So, for example, we collect $230,000 in uh, cash collections in quarter one, and that is taken from schedule number one. And finally, notice that the one of the assumptions that the firm made is that it needs a minimum balance of $30,000 as the ending quarterly cash balance. When a firm does not, when the firm does not meet that goal, and in this case, notice there's an, a, a, a deficit of 94,000 in quarter one. It needs to borrow funds to bring it up to the minimum balance. And so in this case, it would borrow 130,000. And that brings up an ending balance of, that creates an ending cash balance in quarter one of 36,000, which we bring up to the beginning balance for quarter two. And another assumption in the example is that all borrowings are paid at the end of the year. And so the firm borrowed a total of 200,000 paid at the end of the year with subsequent interest costs also paid at the end of the year. Again, these assumptions are specific to this firm in this example. So we're getting close to summarizing the process. So the three major goals of the master budget process is the preparation of the cash budget the pro forma or predicted income statement and the pro forma period ending balance sheet. Here we see the pro forma income statement from the example. And, in, and so this income statement shows the sales or revenues for the period with subsequent expenses removed resulting in a net operating income 
of 102,100. Notice in this example that all of the schedules or all of the values in this budget are taken from the various schedules or sub budgets in the master budget process. And we end this video with the ending balance sheet uh, derived from the various budgets produced prior. And the values are taken from the ending cash budget, the cash balance cash budget, uh, the accounts receivable collections budget, which gives us our accounts receivables figure, the raw materials from the purchases and, and finished goods from the production budget, okay, our retained earnings uses the net income or predicted net income from the income statement. And for those of you that have the text below, this budget is, uh, you see that there is ref, all each item is referenced and this reference can explain each of these values, which is shown below the exhibit in your text. This concludes this presentation on the master budget process. I hope you find this presentation useful in helping you better understand this important managerial accounting process.